comes to oral language development and comprehension, we, again, we know that there, whether it's a Vygotsky in perspective, a stage, or a non-stage development theories, we know that oral language is a strong predictor of later reading comprehension. Katzfei and Zhang, for example, found that phonological awareness and rapid naming predicted the most variance in reading comprehension scores of second graders. However, language skills explained an additional, you know, 14% of that variance. So language skills included that, a lot of that oral language skills. And, and most definitions of oral language development include training in phonological awareness as well. In fact, in third grade, reading accuracy and reading comprehension begin to split in the measures of overall reading. Decoding skills predict reading accuracy, while oral language skills, which again are usually defined as vocabulary and background knowledge, explain the variance in comprehension scores. So you start to see kind of a split um, between what where decoding can take you so far, but eventually then you start to need to know how, what words in language and syntax mean. In terms of oral language and vocabulary, studies show a relationship between oral language development and vocabulary. Hart and Risley propose that the four million word gap that we were talking about earlier in the research on vocabulary and oral language development. Um, more recent work has challenged the size of this gap and the underlying principles in the study. But everyone agrees greater and more complex talk improves vocabulary acquisition. So that's something we want to focus in on in our early childhood classrooms. Assessments of knowledge using vocabulary measures are always highly correlated with comprehension measures. And this leads researchers calling for a renewed focus on building background knowledge and focusing on language, um, academic language acquisition, which is why in some of the more popular um, programs now, let's say core knowledge, you see a much larger time block spent on oral language development in the early childhood classrooms. Critiques of the four million word gap have called into question some of the methodology um, and, and showing like some of the terms of like less educated or parents not showing warm environments might have some kind of bias built into them. For example, we know that children who have parents with a high school degree or less do face opportunity gaps. They're not going on field trips. They're not flying to other countries and that does impact your background knowledge. They're not in social situations where they'll be in proximity of complex language. We know that poverty means parents may not be able to provide the structured literacy activities that are favored in academic disciplines at home. So while the research might debate the difference in, you know, what is the actual word gap and the importance of, or, you know, the biases in how we examine language, we do know that when children have more opportunities for complex language, it is better for their later reading abilities. Uh, studies that talk about word gaps in, in less educated um, often talk about people as being, you know, their instruction at home being more directive in contrast with parents with richer, more educated, um, encouraging the sharing of the child's perspectives. And this might be that you know, there might be evidence that that just might be cultural differences, not so much one of economic opportunities. Different cultures define how you learn um, through direct instruction versus and interaction with adults differently than um, other cultures. Research-based teaching tips. Early childhood teachers should engage in various levels of cognitively challenging tasks talked during the day. We know density of adult talk matters in the early childhood classroom. Three key preschool contexts to increasing the amount of complex conversation are book reading time, play time, and your meal and snack time. In general, the goal is to get children to elaborate and clarify, and that's how you get them to take more intellectual risks. A minimum of 45 minutes, usually divided into two to three um, sessions of read-alouds per day, is recommended for the ch early childhood classroom. And this will allow you to have students elaborate and clarify the stories you read using immediate and non-immediate talk, which is useful during oral language skills. So you don't want to always have to read to the whole group. You want, want to do the small groups to allow for more um, immediate and non-immediate talk between smaller groups of students. Because according to research done by Dickinson and Tabor's immediate and non-immediate talk while reading a book to a child can benefit their oral language development and makes lessons have greater thinking demands. Immediate talk refers to labeling and identifying illustrations in situ while you're reading. 
while non-immediate talk refers to using illustrations as starting points for discussions later on. Sometimes these non-immediate talks can happen during the play groups, like say if you have a um, creative drama station set up with shadow puppets, they might reenact the story, and that gets them involved in another form of non-immediate oral language development. Adult density of talk also requires sustained conversations. Teachers are two to three times more likely to engage in cognitively challenged conversations when they are stationary during playtime rather than circulating the classroom. So if you utilize centers, you may want to stay at one center rather than float around through the classroom. And this does present classroom um, management issues as you try to facilitate those discussions. But the longer that you can spend in sustained conversations around a specific task, the better off for all your students and you can have them rotate through. Research done by Wasik Dobbins and Herman uh, found that children's oral language skills can also be expanded through dialogic reading. In dialogical reading, we will practice that and it is um, a great way to encourage intellectual risk in the early childhood classroom in oral language development. Dialogical reading involves having children actively participate in book reading by responding to prompts about the book. They can simultaneously practice language use and comprehension skills. And there are specific prompts that you ask questions and then you level the questions and you try to increase the complexity over time. And we will be learning more about that throughout this course. Mealtime is an excellent opportunity to add, to add and explain new vocabulary into conversations with students. And this is often when the adult is seated at the table um, in kind of a family style setting. You also can encourage interactions among children. Peer learning is so important part of language development. That's why those, the, you know, having center times once or twice a day, having that structured play time is very important. You need to have a wide range of materials that promote student talking in your class library. Let the students pretend to be libraries. Remember, you want to create those social situations for them to internalize the dialogue that occurs around literacy. And Every child's language or dialect is worthy of respect as a system of communication. So if you have students that speak multiple languages, put all of your environmental print in those languages, celebrate the languages of your students, encourage bilingual behavior amongst your students rather than trying to focus on an English only approach. Um, encourage interaction as children come to understand written language and they develop their own abilities and skills. And this will often happen with their own um, name first. Sorry about that. And you learn the first letters of your name and, and let them play with names, let them play with each other's names. This can involve name boards. And then as they start to learn alphabetic principles, you can do messy letters and things like that. So, but now you're making that connection from oral language development to alphabetic principle. With oral language development in the home, you know, children do come from all different backgrounds and families are known as the child's first teachers. Many children speak varieties of languages at home based on their family and culture. And oral language communication in, in the home supports a child's development of those skills and foundations for emerging literacy skills. And we can create partnerships with parents to increase this oral language development. For example, we during COVID, we ran a preschool where um, students were remote on tablets. And we had student teachers, or not student teachers, but field work teachers, <laughs> that were assisting the parents, not so much in not teaching the students, but assisting the parents in how do you utilize the tablet for meaningful literacy conversations? And also how do you just utilize the tablet and use it? But, you know, we want to coach parents more so on engaging in literacy activities. And there's also been studies that have used text messages in, in early childhood that send out like, you know, words of the day or phonological awareness tips or phonemic awareness tips and have give quick little activities that students can parents can do with their students and these have um, really meaningful impacts on students later performance in these early studies and we hope to that future studies will reproduce these results so reading books aloud to children and engaging them with them in the school and then sending them home is also a great way to um, encourage oral language development one thing that parent um, i have seen in, in preschools is, parent, is teachers write a class book um, with kids and then that goes home in a bag to every single parent and that to read it with their kid and then they get to write a page or add a page to the story or write a comment about the book and that really creates um, an atmosphere that encourages oral language development. 
I also saw, you know, the use of environmental print where a teacher made a book out of everybody's favorite cereal and then that traveled home to all of the parents to talk about with their kids. So think about ways that you can connect the home and the classroom for oral language development. That's all folks.